Namaste and a very warm welcome to each one of you to the Vedic Astrology Masterclass Series 2021. I'm your host, Srishti Pandey, and today we have with us Sri Bill Sinclair, who will be delivering a lecture on the topic of Badhaka, revealing our karmic blocks. But before we continue, I would like to take a quick minute to highlight a few hygiene points. First, please note that the audience will remain on mute throughout the Masterclass session. Second, if any one of you have any questions, please feel free to type the same in the comment section visible on your screen. And finally, the class will go on for about 50 minutes, post which the technical team shall relay the questions for the speaker to respond to them. Before I hand it over to the speaker, I would like to give you all a brief introduction to our foundation. The Raman and Rajeshwari Research Foundation was founded by Dr. B.V. Raman and his son, Sri Niranjan Babu, in 1983. The foundation is non-profit and endeavors to revive, rejuvenate and promote the study of Vedic astrology, Vastu, Yoga, Ayurveda, Vedanta and other related Indian sciences. Under the leadership of its current chairman, Sri Niranjan Babu, the foundation has emerged as a pioneer in the advancement and digitization of Vedic astrology. It has developed and distributed astrological content free astrological software, digitized astrological content, and undertaken path-breaking research in Vedic astrology, including the use of artificial intelligence, big data, spatial analysis, etc., and making it accessible to the astrological world. The foundation has also funded and supported various Vedic activities, including the building of temples, sponsoring Vedic marriages, to name a few. It has also established a fund to honor pioneers in the field of Vedic astrology. The eminent list of scholars who have received recognition by the foundation include Dr. David Frawley, Dr. T.S. Vasan, Dr. Bill Levisi, Dr. Aralu Maldige Parthasarthi, Swami Sita Ramananda, Swami Sukha Bodhananda, and Sri D.N. Muni Krishna, to name a few. Till date, the foundation has organized over 100 events, including conferences, lectures, seminars, and workshops, and has received tremendous support from the press and public alike. And now, as we begin the session, I'm honored to introduce today's speaker. Sri Bill Sinclair, who has a master's in social work, has presented webinars and lectured at more than 40 Jyotish conferences across India, the United Kingdom, and the United States. He's a member of the board of the American College of Vedic Astrology. He maintains an active astrological consultation practice, as well as a psychotherapy practice in Seattle, Washington. He can be contacted on www.billsinclair.com. Thank you very much, sir, for being with us and a very warm welcome to you. And now, as we begin today's masterclass, I would like to remind you all to post your questions only in the comment section. Sri Sinclair shall answer them at the end of the session. Sir, over to you. Thank you very much, Shishti, for that introduction. So let's dive in. Um, so I'm now sharing my screen. So today we are going to be talking very much uh, about uh, Badaka, revealing our karmic blocks. And I have to start by saying how grateful I am to be invited to this, um, given this opportunity to present today. Um, I have had the great pleasure of meeting and spending time with Naranjan Babu and uh, Umarani as well. And it's just great uh, for someone like me who grew up in the West to be able to um, sit and speak with them with all of their knowledge. They're so generous in sharing and teaching uh, that I feel very privileged to be here today. So I wanted, I took up the, it's interesting how as an astrologer, certain things come into your mind and just stay in your mind. For years, I've known about Bataka, and I kind of, you know, had vague understandings of it. And then about six months ago, um, I heard a talk by um, Camilla Sutton, who is my primary teacher, um, and really kind of became inspired to go deeper into this study. And as luck would have it, um, I got the invitation around that time, so I've been preparing for it. So today we're going to talk about the karmic blocks that we find that, you know, my understanding of how Bhattaka really works in the chart and how we can use this information to help our clients 
see the things that they can't see. So let's begin with um, asking the gods for our blessing on our study today that we will understand it. So take a moment, relax. Um, let's just relax your shoulders, you know, if, and we're going to take a few deep breaths and then we'll begin the mantras. Om Shri Vigneshwaraya Namaha Om Shri Vigneshwaraya Namaha Om Shri Vigneshwaraya Namaha Om Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Guru Sakshat Param Brahman Tasmai Shri Guru Ve Namaha Om Adityaye Somaye Mangalaye Buddhaya Cha Guru Shukra Shanibhyas Cha Rahu Ve Ketu Ve Namaha So this is me on one of my earlier trips to India, which I have been very fortunate to take um, under the guidance of uh, Camilla Sutton um, and uh, really look forward to the world situation clearing up so I can come back. So um, as was mentioned, I have a, a master's degree in social work. And, you know, in the United States, that's one of the degrees we use that uh, to practice mental health counseling and uh, working with people on that area. So while I don't explicitly use Jyotish in my practice with um, my psychotherapy clients, it's I'm deeply informed by Vedic knowledge, yogic remedies and things like that in my work with them. So while it helps to inform my work in psychotherapy today, I'm going to use my work in psychotherapy to help, you know, look through that lens at this concept of bhadaka. So I always like to start with the dictionary. And so bhadaka has many meanings, but they seem to fall into four categories. So there's some energy there that can be harassing and prejudicing towards things. Um, so you can, you know, it, it can really hold, people can feel uh, overwhelmed or bothered by an area. It can have the effect of being hindering, oppressing or opposing. Um, that it can be another way to look at that word block. It can cause pain and injury. And it can also have this effect of annulling, setting aside, or suspending. And in my work with um, astrology clients, often they will come in and they just say, I just feel like I'm being oppressed by my job. They will, you know, they just really think that um, the relationship with a sibling can be very painful, or it's just an area of the life that's not working at all. Often this is romance, it's just not working or career. And so as an astrologer, knowing these key words, it's interesting how the universe works. We'll actually say, without knowing anything, astrological keywords like this. So I've started to use, you know, by understanding these, you'll train yourself to when these are said, you know, okay, let's see what the badaka is happening here. And so these are the different ways that we can see it working in a person's life. And I just you know, like to start with that. So Bhadaka signs and the planets that rule them and are placed in them reveal the karmic obstacles that lie in wait for every one of us. Um, and understanding these blocks is particularly important when considering the mental health status of a client. So it's amazing how pervasive the, um, our perspective on life is. We often, we can't change external events often, but how we can choose to react to them is the great power that we can see in the Vedic chart and in our work with people. Um, so this is where um, I wanted to start with this. The other thing that really came to light for me in this, um, and it, I just want to share with you, I, you know, it's interesting, you know, when you're an astrologer, you think you have this great breakthrough moment, 
And then you talk, talk to your friends who are astrologers and they all just nod politely and think, yeah, I've known that for years. Uh, but uh, so I want to say that I started out, I'm kind of looking at the Bodhaka as it's really a fixed relationship between the signs. And so the signs we think of Eris, Taurus, you know, Gemini as having all these characteristics. So it's, this is, we always focus on what they do. But in this presentation, I really want to devote um, time to exploring how when you pair a sign with the Bodhaka sign, you get to immediately see the karmic um, challenges and difficulties that come there. So the Bodhaka is going to be showing us like the shadow side of every sign. We tend to focus on what a particular sign does, but I almost have this visual of looking at like the dark side of the moon. This is where how the Bodhaka acts in life. And it's the things we often can't see that then come to life. So there are different types of karmic blocks. The Bodhaka sign taken from the Janma Lagna indicates the physical blocks and obstacles we'll encounter in our daily life. The Bodhaka sign from the Chandra Lagna primarily indicates the mental blocks that arise in our life. And this is where I think we can often see one of the things it said was prejudice and things like that. This is where this I look at a lot from the Chandra Lagna to understand. And the Bodhaka sign from the Surya Lagna indicates soul level blocks um, that work to influence the native's whole life. So these are the very deep-seated karmas. Now, I want to explicitly call out, I'm using the type of karma we're talking about here is the challenging karma. Uh, so um, these, this is what is really revealed by these, um, the Bodhaka signs. And if we look then at a chart for confluence of these factors, when we study the Janma, Chandra, and Surya Lagnas, the Bodhakas that are present, we can then indicate the severity of the issues that the native will experience. What's interesting is often in the famous lives, which is the charts we'll be looking at, you'll see a pattern that develops. You'll see how the bodhikas overlap and kind of tell a story. So we look for a pattern like you just can't, the Janma Lagna gives you some information, but you can't really tell how deep that block is gonna go. But when you see something relating on all three, from all three lagnas, this is where we really see something that's going to give a deep impact and, you know, perhaps really mark the native's life. Therefore, they will need to work harder at it to shift it because it's easier to change our, we all know how hard it is to just to change our physical habits. Um, but that's a little easier often than changing our mental habits. And then it's only through grace that we get a change on the soul level. So this is something we wanted to introduce so that we could start to look at charts. Um, and once you get the, um, you know, the formula down for determining the Bhattaka, it can really give you a lot of information. So we're going to start with the movable signs. So for movable signs, the 11th sign is the Bhattaka. This is a very simple dictum that we all learned years ago. And so I really started to think about that. So we can see for Aries, Aquarius is going to be the blocking energy. Cancer is blocked by Taurus's energy. Libra is blocked by Leo's energy. And Capricorn is blocked by Scorpio. So the faults that, you know, the Lugna, when the Lugna's in Aries, then it's going to be Aquarian type issues that are going to be the challenges that they will have to overcome. And the goal here is to guide our clients to balance the Aries and Aquarius nature. And when you can harmonize those, then you will really have moved past this block and it will work well. So I like to start with, you know, I was just exploring why would movable signs, what's the key relationship between movable signs and the 11th sign from it. So the 11th house, which we would bring, which would be the one in play, is often said to bring rewards and wish fulfillment, but the ruler of that house brings poor results. 
So this is always, you know, it's a very complex sign. It's the house of profits and gains. It's second from our 10th house of actions. So planets placed there. But as the 11th, as the 11th Lord is sixth from the sixth, we see that it's a deeper manifestation. The Lord often brings obstacles and challenges. So one of the indications, and this is how I'm, you can look at so many different classifications of results, and I'm going to be choosing more psychological ones in this presentation. So the 11th house is the older siblings or older sibling, you know, the oldest one, those that were born before you. So when someone comes in and is having, you know, um, I never got along with my older sister or older brother. This is an indication that the Bhattaka may be the core of their issue. The other thing that's interesting to look at is by the structure of this, movable signs are being blocked by the fixed sign of their opposing element. So here we have Aries as a fire sign. Um, opposing fire signs is always the air signs. And we, so we have movable Aries opposed by fixed Aquarius. And so we start to, this is the kind of fundamental dynamics I started to play with to see if we couldn't find a deeper meaning um, in this Bhattaka principle. So movable signs can be blocked by fears related to a lack of support or fear of failure. The fixed nature of the Bhattaka sign can also cause stagnation. So for movable signs, one, one way it can play out in general is that um, they can um, fear that they're not going to get their just rewards. That's another way to put it. And that can, you know, make them not act or the opposite may occur. The native may not adequately consider the risks of the endeavor before starting it. So uh, this is can be this can be the impulsiveness that they don't take the time because the eleventh house well Aquarius is the sign where we have a consciousness of the larger scale impact of our actions and how we can help the masses we move beyond our personal orientation of ourself and our needs into um, uh, Aquarius which is the larger the larger uh, humanity uh, that we're working for. So without a complete analysis of the possible outcomes of a given situation, a person may face unexpected obstacles during the process. So movable signs in all areas, you know, Aries, Cancer, uh, Libra, and Capricorn uh, can want to spring into action, but they can be held back by not adequately considering things. So Aries drive for self-expression needs to be moderated, moderated by the Aquarian universal values. So it's, I always think of Aries as me and Aquarius is we consciousness. So those two have to be in balance and that's how you're going to overcome uh, the obstacle. For cancer, there's this, this is our real drive for happiness and contentment. And it will be influenced by Taurus's need for safety and security. And so these are the, this is the dynamic that people, you know, if cancer is um, the lagna, then you're going to have to be worth, start thinking with them and working about, you know, you don't want to um, be foolish in your search for happiness and contentment and take unnecessary risks. Libra's desire for partnership must be balanced with the individual e ego of Libra. So this is the classic, you know, self-other. Libra always wants a partnership, but if they have trouble, if they have a very strong sun, their ego may be in the way. Or they, if the, you know, um, sun is very weak, they may not have enough ego to pursue a partner. So this is the, um, the kind of the equilibrium we're looking to establish. And finally, in this area, Capricorn's focus on social justice will be challenged by the deep-seated emotions of Scorpio. Um, so this is, you know, something that's very prevalent in today's world, of course, because we have Saturn-Jupiter uh, conjunction right now in Capricorn that only comes around every, what, 60 years. And, you know, it's a power-packed time. 
So this is another way to balance this baraka is that we have to balance what's our role in the world and versus everyone else that we're sharing the planet with. And so we see this a very vivid scale right now uh, playing out. And I want to also note that, you know, um, there could be issues with the mother because if the moon is placed in Scorpio, that would be its debilitated position. So if you see moon in Scorpio and Scorpio is, uh, and Capricorn is being considered with Scorpio as the Badaka, then that would be a time to query. How's your relationship with your mother? How, how are things going with her? So I wanted to put in uh, a, a couple charts as we move through just to kind of give, um, a little substance to how I'm putting it together. So many of you may know James Franco. I always like to give actors pictures because I don't know their names, but sometimes I'll recognize their face. So he's an American um, uh, actor and filmmaker. He, he started his career in 2010 and he was nominated for an Academy Award for the movie 127. He's in many kind of comedies. Uh, as you can see there, he was in Eat, Pray, Love and uh, uh, the Spider-Man trilogy, if you've seen that, 20, 2002 to 2007. And he's known, he was known for his collaboration with fellow actor Seth Rogen. And then most recently, he was in the film The Disaster Artist, and he won a Golden Globe for Best Actor. So let's look at his chart. So he was born April 19th, 1978 at 1904 in Stanford, California. Um, the charts I give the RRAA, if I hope everyone is familiar with this, it's the Rodden rating system, uh, which validates the authenticity of the birth data. So AA rating is the highest one. So we can feel pretty confident, you know, working with charts. And I always encourage people to um, uh, really consider the source of that data. Because, you know, if you have bad timing, it can go off. So here we have, he is Libra rising and he's an actor. So right away we think, oh, that's probably pretty good. And so from um, a movable sign, we would look at the 11th house for his Badaka. So 11th from Libra is, of course, Leo. And so this is what we were talking about, that, you know, all Libras have a block with Libra in their nature. So again, his ego is uh, coming into play here. And in the, in the sign here of the fixed sign of Libra, we, sorry, of Leo, we see Moon and Saturn are both seated there. And so this lets us know that this is going to be a, um, uh, that his, he will have to learn to moderate and balance his ego, which is not unusual. Um, and that, that this is also the, um, the moon is seated there. So this is also his lagna, uh, his chandra lagna. And so you can see that his, the phys, who he is, is strongly going to be influenced by this, by his ability to, um, balance his mental sphere and maintain mental balance here. And you can see the association with Saturn can bring some difficulties, I would say probably depression. Usually moon Saturn combination can give that um, impression. So we're going to be working on this chart as we move through here. So that's just the first step is to see that uh, Libra will always have trouble with Leo and they have to balance that in their art because all the indications of Libra, I'm talking about relationships for um, this particular chart, but also in his um, work, um, this, these issues will start to combine and he will have to balance that energy. Um, okay. So, Let's now talk about the fixed signs. What is the dynamic uh, from the fixed signs? And from all the fixed signs, the ninth sign is the Badaka sign. So here we see that Taurus, the Badaka for Taurus is Capricorn. For Leo, 
the Bodhaka sign is Aries. For Scorpio, the Bodhaka sign is Cancer. And for Aquarius, the Bodhaka sign is Libra. Now, the ninth house, is, it delivers good luck and good fortune, you know, it, that we earn in this life. So it's interesting to think for all the fixed signs, they um, have the ninth from them. It's, it's kind of depressing when I first looked at it. But another way to look at this is to say, well, the blocks are really from your fathers and authority figures. And that seems to make sense. A fixed sign usually is not that great at taking um, input or feedback. They usually, so you can see here that the relationship helps to really clarify that they are going to have difficulty accepting teachers, bosses, supervisors, things like that. Um, so this can be a stumbling block for them as they live out their life. Um, it's also interesting that fixed signs are oppressed by um, the movable sign of their own element. Because you can see, because it's the ninth sign, they, Taurus is an uh, earth sign and it's blocked by Capricorn. Uh, the fire signs Leo and Aries can block each other. So, it, which makes me think that it can be your own internal trait that can be stand, you know, standing in your way. So as you're looking at these fixed signs and you start to think, okay, they're going to have this tendency to stump their, stub their own toe, but like get in their way and maybe be the source of their own undoing. So this is, you know, how the Bodica helps to, for us to start to look out for these characteristics. So here we see the reverse of the first condition. Instead of the movable signs being blocked by the fixed, now we have the fixed signs being blocked by the movable signs. So fixed signs are troubled by movable signs and the movable signs want to move, fixed signs want to stay where they are. So it's quite interesting, this back and forth play, and this covers two thirds of the signs that we deal with in the chart. Fixed signs prefer to remain fixed in their routine and will need to carefully analyze and plan contingencies before making changes. So they really want to plan everything out. This can lead to we go what some people call paralysis by analysis. They will just keep planning and planning and planning, but they'll never like take action. Um, and you can see here the reason they do that is because they're blocked on which is the right path. Um, they benefit from incremental changes and reassessment throughout the process to overcome this obstacle. So this is a pro an approach I use all the time with um, my uh, uh, all of my clients is that, you know, people often feel this rush to make a change. And invariably, especially with the fixed signs, if they can just slow down and decide one thing and let them go through the progression at their own pace, it usually plays out better. And they don't have to stay, weirdly enough, they're gonna wanna stay fixed on what their goal is, but if you can encourage them to reevaluate, it may get them moving along the path easier so they can build confidence in how they're approaching the Bodhika energy. So that's just a general approach that I use. So Bhattaka for fixed signs may manifest as internal blocks as they share the same element. One's own tendencies and a particular area may be the source of your own undoing. Um, as the Bhattaka is the ninth sign, this indicates that overcoming obstacles in this area of life can bring knowledge and advancement. However, the, the native may not recognize their advancement and continually strive for more. So this is where the blessing of the ninth house comes in, is that through effort, perseverance, and study, that's how we gain wisdom. And so while this is an area that's often blocked for people, fixed signs, if they can channel their perseverance into overcoming this obstacle through this incremental approach, they can really make a lot of progress in life. But that usually requires, you know, many circumstances to line up and it will require patience and persistence on the Jyotishi they're working with, you know, and helping them not to get mired in their own fears. Fears 
nervousness, anxiety, all that kind of stuff. That's what blocks everyone. Um, so here we can find a lifelong learner, or if it's afflicted, we can find a fraud, someone who claims to have better skills and knowledge than they possess. So this is, you know, we kind of look at the two examples here and watch them. So let's see what comes next. Yeah, so now we see that the fixed earth is opposed by movable earth. As I said, all the elements are listed at the top of the screen. And so now we go to Taurus's need for safety and security must always be balanced by the desire to help others. So this is the, the way that I always look at this axis. So, and issues with authority figures, especially if Jupiter is in Capricorn where he is debilitated. So that would be something that you can really call out when you start to combine these with planetary placements. Leo's desire for tradition must be balanced by innovation and progress, which is Aries. There can be father issues if sun is in Aries. Now, sun is exalted in Aries. And what this usually plays out is um, what I sometimes call the great man theory. The child feels like the father is too overwhelming and too big and too bright. This is that aspect of Surya that makes him a malefic, is that you know too much sun and we all get burned. Um, so we have a, a good example of that. I'm not using the chart, but a recent former president of the United States, who was Leo Rising, um, idolized his father. And it's then turned out that his father was actually pretty much thought to have been a criminal. So, you know, this is a interesting dynamic to look at for Leo, is to see how are they balancing the fixed nature of Leo also like this is the way I want it um, with the need to create and express themselves. So this balance of tradition, the other higher nature of Leo we can't forget also is the king must uh, serve all the people. So um, a, a really great leader is not there for himself. He's there for um, his uh, serving others. So you see that theme through all this bodhika, there's often the theme of service to self versus service to others. And um, the right path is always to make sure that there's a balance of both. Uh, Scorpio's fixation on the unresolved past um, must um, past may block feelings of contentment and satisfaction. So Scorpio here is of course a caused by cancer. So is uh, the Dagda Rashi is cancer. Scorpio's fixation, you know, is always on the work we have left to do. This is the very challenging karma from past life that's manifesting here. Now, if the moon is in cancer, which is the Bhattaka for Scorpio, uh, you can really expect mother issues to be prominent in the work that the person is doing either on the physical level, the mental, or the soul level, depending on the lagna that you're studying. The Aquarian tendency towards dealing with groups may limit their ability to maintain intimate partnerships. And that's because we have Libra there um, opposing uh, Aquarius. So Aquarius energy of like, let's all get together and everything. Uh, let's serve the highest good is often challenged by Libra where they do, in order to do service on that level, you have to have partners and you have to have support. So this is, if Libra is, is weak or challenged, um, you know, or then that block is going to be very difficult for the Aquarian to overcome. So then maybe a person who spends their life sitting on their couch, um, you know, like prophesying great things to come or, you know, talking about movements, and not really doing anything that yields substance and helps others. Um, if you have uh, father issues may develop, if you have the sun in its debilitated sign of Libra. So let's look, let's go a little further here with James Franco's chart. So we have um, his Libra rising is opposed by Leo, which is a fixed sign. 
So from Leo, we would go nine signs forward. And so if we just count the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, you see that then um, the moon is being opposed, uh, sorry, Leo is being opposed by um, Aries, which is just the natural order of Badaka. But we start to see kind of a pattern here that um, this, the Badaka sign here means that Venus and Sun will also cause problems for the native. And this is in the house of partnerships. So he has to balance from the physical level, he has to balance his um, ego. And then from the mental level, which is the moon's, uh, the Chandra Lagna, he is going to be challenged by his ego as well. And so we start to see a pattern developing here. That um, And it also has to do because of Venus is also the sign of women and intimate relationships, that there will be some issues here, you know, perhaps with, you know, his mother could be here, but um, with partners and partnerships um, related to himself. So now we move into the dual signs or the mutable signs. From the dual signs, it's always the seventh sign that is the Bodhika. So Gemini is opposed by Sagittarius, Virgo by Pisces, Sag by Gemini, and Pisces by Virgo. So it's a reciprocal relationship. All of the Mercury and Jupiter signs oppose each other. So the seventh house indicates our partnerships and those who oppose us or have an opposing point of view. And um, that's a natural block anyway, as many people have said about the seventh house. And so it comes up with, again, it's our, what we want, and then how, how do those we work with want? This is the Bodhika theme that keeps coming up. Fixed signs are opposed by the dual sign of their opposite element. So here we have kind of a combination of those things. So it's the air versus fire and earth versus water. And so again, it's a complex balancing act we have to undergo. Um, as all of the signs are dual in nature, we see that the Mercury ruled signs are blocked and harassed by the Jupiter signs. And the reverse is also true. So this axis, the Mercury Jupiter axis, may be characterized as the balance required by a student and a teacher relationship. Um, novel change driven by Mercury um, will need to be balanced by experience and wisdom of Jupiter. So this is kind of the dynamic for all Mercury signs. It's, um, I see Mercury is like communication and curiosity. It's all about logic. You know, they're all about organization. They're very here and now. But it's Jupiter signs, Sagittarius and Pisces, that take it to the next level. And so there's the idea of knowledge versus wisdom. And this is where I tend to work with people um, that have one end of the axis. They need to go to the other one, you know, on all of these things. And it's so clear in these ones because that has the seventh aspect to it. So the reciprocal nature... Um, so here we list the dual signs, you know, together. The reciprocal nature of the Bodhika sign. If it is strong, if the planets, so if the lords of the house are well placed and the planets placed there are strong, then they're able to strive for balance. If it's afflicted, it can lead to an extreme point of view or indecisiveness. So this is, we'll be talking a little bit later about how you assess then the lords of the signs and that tells us how to start to um, judge the relationship that we see. So Gemini and Sagittarius, some of the things that came up, it's the balance with youth and wisdom. It's the um, student and the teacher, and it's worldly um, and spiritual knowledge. So these are the extremes that tend to come out in the Gemini-Sagittarius axis both ways. And with the Virgo Pisces, the balance needs to be between the material and the metaphysical, the form and the formless, and the details and the grand plans. 
So these, this is where you can see that it's very easy to go, especially um, people tend to weigh heavily, either they're much more metaphysical or they're much more material. You know, either they negate um, all spirituality or they negate all science. And so this is the I mean, split we're seeing right now all over the world, especially here in the US. And so the truth lies in the middle, both exist, all exist. So um, it's finding that balance. And so that's when you were looking at the, at the um, dual signs to keep that in mind of where is this person falling out on that spectrum. Um, Gemini's curiosity is augmented by Sagittarian ability to structure learning and build larger themes and understanding. So how to take the specific and extrapolate it to the general term. The ego formation in Gemini opposes ego transcendence in Sagittarius. So, you know, this is uh, Gemini's where we really start to find our sense of self, our ego, our identity is being worked out. It represents adolescent stage of life. And that's, of course, where um, every person figures out kind of who their mature person is, um, who they're going to be in their life. And that's opposed with Sagittarius, who is, begins the journey of transcending the individual ego into the higher consciousness of universality. Virgo's detailed organization is enhanced by the intuition of Pisces. So they can work beautifully together. The Sagittarian devotion to tradition is stimulated by Gemini's youthful energy and irreverence at times. I mean, you know, it's like w the traditions are there, but they can be enriched and enhanced by the Gemini's youthful energy. Pisces' immersion and in intuition yields its fruit through the efforts of Virgo. So I think I'm um, just trying to share with you different ways to look at this. Hopefully some of these images will resonate for you when you're understanding how to understand, uh, when you're looking at a chart about the Virgo, about the dual sign Badakas, like what are their blocks and how do they work together? So I want to add, introduce a new chart here for this sign, uh, for the um, dual signs. And Jim Baker, who's photographed here on the right-hand side, was an American televangelist and a convicted fraudster. Um, he ran a really a huge television program called the PTL Club with his wife, Tammy Faye, and they developed Heritage USA, which is a, was a Christian theme park. Tammy Faye became very, very famous. She was a pop icon basically in the 80s because of her very heavy makeup. And so she actually became, in a way, more famous than him. Um, but in the late 80s, um, it was uncovered that he was um, paying hush money after having uh, sexually assaulted Jessica Hahn. And it was kind of one of the first big revelations. It was also one of the first, he was also then convicted, convicted of fraud and felony charges for embezzling money from the PTL ministry. And it was kind of the first one in unfortunately a series of the um, evangelical Christian ministers being exposed as frauds and thieves. Um, and so everything. So he ended up going to, pres um, uh, to prison. And um, he current, now I just read this, he's back, he's out of prison and he is has another television show and he focuses on discussing biblical prophecy while promoting emergency survival products. So, uh, you know, it's just, it talk about karma. This is what I want to bring up. I thought, you know, like, I don't think he's quite learned his lesson yet. He's still like hammering away at that, you know, same thing. So he's an Aquarius rising. So very interesting immediately when I saw his chart, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, here, here he has this big draw. He has this ability to present himself as like caring for the needy. And um, the PTL channel was their own channel, which is very unusual. It's right as cable TV started and they were on like 24 hour seven and Tammy Faye, his wife would be on television 10 to 12 hours a day. 
talking and preaching and interviewing people and raising money. And so it was one of the first things that they were really generating that scam. So it's this interesting thing that, you know, Aquarians have that ability to cultivate a relationship with the masses. So he obviously has that. And so um, that's his fixed, so he has a fixed ascendant. And so we look here at the um, the block to, uh, to Aquarius comes from uh, Sagittarius. Wait. Yeah, fixed ascendant is we go to the ninth house. So if we move from here, we move nine houses forward, and it's in his ninth house, which is Libra with Rahu placed there. So we see here that this is, you know, he's able to, he has a block about being a teacher, but also you see that there's this partnerships, issues with partnerships, issues with the ninth house. He's going to have trouble, you know, balancing that. And then he has Rahu in the ninth house, arguably the worst place for Rahu to be in many charts because it cuts him off from teaching and higher knowledge and higher wisdom. So then let's look at his moon. And so his moon is in a uh, in Virgo. And so we go to the seventh from that, which is uh, Pisces. So his mental level, on the physical level, he's about able to present himself as this televangelist, as a teacher, as a minister, as a guide, and the leader of a flock. But there's some difficulty there, unusual things that we can see already. So then from his mental level, we see there's this real emphasis on he is very practical. You know, the moon is there in um, Virgo. And uh, we see here that the opposite of that is being blocked by Mars, Jupiter, and Gulika is there in the, in the opposing house for his mental level. So again, he can see himself as a guru because it's very strong there. And, um, but there's this shadow even on that. And now we go and we look at his son and the sun, of course, is in um, Sagittarius, so it's opposed by Gemini. So all of his dual signs, this um, duplicitous nature, are all, you know, involved from the sun and the moon, the deeper the mental and the karmic blocks. And, of course, sun sitting in Sagittarius would be, could be a great teacher, but it's being blocked by um, uh this other desire here in the fifth house, um, which is ruled by Mercury and the Mercury-Sun combination here, uh, we see put together. So it's interesting that the sex scandal that which led to his financial in investigation started in Jupiter and Rahu. And so we see that uh, Rahu is placed in a Bataka house and Jupiter is placed in the Bataka house. Uh, Badaka from the moon and Badaka from the lagna. So we see here that these are, you know, it, this is when the really everything started to come out. But, he, you know, it seems like he has not been able to um, really uh, complete that. He hasn't really been able to move on. So that's the basic structure of how this works. And now we're going to look at a little bit about how we extend the reach of the Badaka. So we've, so we've really covered the basic structure, and now we're going to move into the um, how we see the other things. So the following planets will have an obstructive influence on the affairs of the native, as indicated by the house of which they occupy and rule. So we look at when once you identify what the Bodica sign is, it's the planet that rules the Bodica sign. Um, and that is called um, the Badakesh and the planets that are seated in the Bodica. Those are all the indications of, you know, how that Bodica sign is going to play out. Planets associated with the Badakesh are also considered. So uh, the planetary association includes planets that are conjunct in mutual aspect or exchanging signs, the Parivartana Yoga. 
and planets in the Bhadaka aspects the other signs by both Parashari and Rashi Drishti aspects. So that's kind of the basic interpretation model. So now we've done actors, we've done televangelists. I wanted to move to a little, you know, more positive plane and look at the chart of Paramahansa Yogananda. So before we've seen how all of the Bhadaka signs seem to interrelate and cause a series of problems. And so um, I, you know, James Franco, the actor, recently has come out that he was abusive towards women. And so he is now like, he had to pay millions of dollars in retribution. So he was using that bodica to his um, seventh house was really destructive in his relationships and partnerships. And he's been, you know, it's all coming out now, all the problems he had and how the televangelists also had all these money problems and problems with women. Um, so these were the big blocks that were shown in their life. But now we look at a chart that has, you know, manage them and transcended them. And so we have Leo rising and um, we have the moon placed here. So this is interesting when, when you see the um, sun or moon in the first house, this doubles the Bhadaka influence in a way. So as a fixed sign, we look at the ninth house here and we have um, for moon and for the Lagna, we have uh, Aries is the Bhadaka sign. And again, we have Rahu placed in the ninth house. But here we see a life that with the alignment of the, the physical nature and also the mental nature, um, he was able to manifest, change radically his uh, life so that he achieves spiritual realization. So the ego here was able to be kept, kept in check. You know, his need for power was not because of Rahu. He was able to transcend that to the higher plane and use that energy to go up into spiritual advancement. So to see further about this, we would see that the ruler of Aries is Mars, and it is placed here in the eighth house, um, where it's in a friend's sign, and it's placed with Jupiter, the ruler of the sign. So uh, so Pisces with Jupiter and Mars in it is a great sign. It's the moksha sign. Now it's in, this is a challenging, this is past life karma that's coming up. And so he did have some little struggles early on, you know, especially with his family um, and things like that. Uh, his father, you know, wanted him to pursue a more, nor a more average life and he wanted to be a renunciate. So you can see how that energy is described by this combination of planets. And then if we look from there, um, Rahu only has, you know, um, Rahu, which is placed in the Bhadaka, can, um, can some people take a, a fifth, ninth a, um, aspect for him in seventh. So it impacts here. And then it can also aspect the ascendant and the fifth house. So this whole, trine of dharma is uh, strongly impacted. But the strength of the alignment here helps to overcome, I think, the lower nature of Rahu and helps to bring um, more of the ability to make radical change in your life. So we've done the moon, we've done the, the um, uh, ascendant, and finally we come here to Sagittarius. Um, the sun. So the sun is in Sagittarius, which is a mutable sign. And it then is the Bhadaka would be the 11th house. And the ruler, the Bhadakesh, is seated back here with Mercury in the fifth house. Uh, sorry, not in the fifth house, in the, um, the, Lug the Surya Lagna. So we see here that the self and others, he um, was able to um, bring out the higher qualities of Sagittarius. And interestingly, um, so Mercury comes back here. And so what we see here is that we see kind of not so much connection. We see that all the Bodhikas are in the trine house. Oh, sorry. Oh, wow. It's too early in the morning for me. So here we are. Um, 
the um, the fifth lord and the uh, wow, the ninth lord and the eleventh lord are the two Bodica energies. Aries and Gemini are the Bodica energy, but their lords are um, well placed here with the association in Pisces, which brings us to Moksha, and here it's in Sagittarius which is also the beginning of wisdom and spiritual development. Um, and the last thing I want to cover, and I know we're coming short on time, is the aspects. And so you can see that, that you look at the all of the basic aspects given here um, in Parashara that we all know, all, as, all planets aspect the seventh. The special aspect includes the fourth and the eighth. Jupiter fifth and ninth, and Saturn third and tenth. While um, there are many views on Ketu's aspects, I use fifth and ninth. Um, and then the Bodhika, uh, the other interesting thing is that the the idea of Rashi Drishti um, mirrors the Bodhika signs as well. So for all movable signs, the Bodhika sign is the um, uh, 11th house. And from the 11th house, the fixed signs will aspect all of the movable signs, and that would be placed in the Lagna, the 4th, and the 7th houses. And you see here that the fixed signs are, um, the, the Bodhika sign is the movable sign. And from the 9th house, the movable signs will aspect the fixed signs. We've talked about this before. And those signs are placed in the Lagna, the fourth, and the seventh houses. And then the dual signs is the same thing aspected by the dual sign. And they, so this relationship remains the same that the, um, the, the fixed and movable interchange here. And then the duals have mutual reception. But in each of these, from the, the sign that we're looking at, there will be an aspect to um, the Lagna, the fourth, and the seventh. So you may have recognized that these pot these patterns um, are duplicated. So if we look at this, we can see the Badakesh for the Lagna is here, and Rahu is placed. And so we talked about Rahu's aspect to the fifth, the from him, the fifth, the seventh, and the ninth. And then we would also um, look at, there's no planets placed here. And so this is another thing is that while Rahu is casting these aspects for these two ascendants, the Surya Lagna is not casting. Uh, there's no planets placed here. So the soul level blocks are very minimal for Yogananda. And he was mainly working with re resolving the mental and physical blocks um, of his training and everything. And that allowed him to move on to an enlightened state. Um, when we're judging the strength of an obstruction, if the planet causing the obstruction is weak, then the issues that arise will be difficult um, to identify and to address. The native will have great difficulty identifying the root belief that is responsible for the negative behavior pattern. So, and this is what makes an obstruction very difficult to overcome. If you can't really identify it and work with them, it, be kind of, it becomes a lifelong problem. However, if the planet causing the obstruction is strong, then the person will be, will be able to recognize the behavior and with effort and the propitiation of the planet, we'll be able to overcome the obstacles. So here we don't have, um, so, you know, the, um, the Lord of the, the, the Lord of uh, the Lagna Bhattaka is Mars and it's well-placed. I mean, in the, it's, you know, Malefics do okay in the eighth house, but for the chart, it is the ninth lord, which is helpful, and um, and the fourth lord, so it's Yoga Karaka. So this makes Mars quite strong, which allowed him to recognize the deficits that he needed to work with on both the mental and um, uh, physical plane. The Badaka 
for the bada Kesh, I should say, from the sun, Mercury, is also placed in the fifth house where, um, and he is not combust. So this is um, quite good. Um, and it is it is the ruler, you know, ruler of the 11th and second is usually not great for the sign. Um, you know, so, but there's no really, there's no further obstructions here by multiple planets that come into play. Um, and then the other thing we can, when we're, um, evaluating the, the depth of the obstruction is that the obstruction is considered to be more difficult when Gulika occupies the Bhattaka sign or is placed in the sign ruled by the Bhattakesh. So if the Gulika has influence, it makes the, the um, obstruction more difficult. Also, if the Bhattakesh is the lord of the 22nd Drekana from the Lagna. And so here, of course, we see Gulika does not meet um, any of those conditions. It does not play in. And Jupiter is the lord of the 22nd Drekana, and it is placed with the Badakesh here. So that gave some problems. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, Jupiter is the karak of the father. Um, but, and there was some, you know, delay in also him meeting his guru but it was a past life guru that came to him. So we can see um, how these obstacles can play out in um, a life. Now, the one last chart I found really interesting I wanted to share with you is Bernie Madoff. He was, uh, um, uh, he had the great, biggest Ponzi scheme. It was a financial fraud in the US. And his chart is actually quite interesting because we see Leo is rising here so we go to the ninth house to find the um, uh, the Badaka, and it's in Aries. And so he has an exalted sun. The moon is new, so it's weak. But all of these are obstructed. And we have Mercury there, which is retrograde. So as we look at this, we see that on the physical level, he his physical ability to achieve things is being blocked by both on the solar and mental on the um uh the from the surya lagna the soul level and the moon level are badaka they're blocking his ability to do things and when they're together like we say this is aries so we go to the 11th house from that and it's we see that this is in the house of obstacles and the masses so his story is kind of neatly told here because he was a very bright man. He had a very big ego, but he didn't have any really compassion for people. And this is played out when he was, when the fraud was uncovered, he um, was arrested and never spoke to his family again. He didn't have a lawyer. He just went to court and, and pled guilty. So, the lives of his two sons were ruined because they were in the business with him. And it was assumed that they were in on the fraud when in fact, it doesn't seem like they were. And even his wife, he just cut them off and never would see them once he went to prison. So you can see how like, there's a really interesting thing about this was so deep. I think to understand this chart, he had a huge ego. He had no compassion for others. And you see that not only is the moon here is weak, but the badaka for the sun and the moon is the 11th. So he had a great desire to influence the masses, but he didn't have a particular connection with them. In fact, a lot of his, uh, the, he ran a false investment fund where he faked the results and it was just like a, a Ponzi scheme where you pay in and pay out. And, you know, he just, they went bankrupt were a lot of charities. That is what he did. Um, so he was very, you know, um, it's interesting because it was such a big fraud. And this is where I think the sun here being exalted in the ninth house talks to how big it was. And also Jupiter's aspecting the ascendant. So there was great um, ability and desire to do it, uh, to achieve on a big scale, but he couldn't do it um, because of this Bataka block. And we see Mars here, Gulika is in the sign with uh, the Lord of 
uh, the Badakesh the here is Mars and Gulika is placed with him. So you can see that this is a chart that's really deeply afflicted. The karmic dent here was very deep and it was really on all three levels because, you know, the, the Mars is there and the Lugna Lord is placed in it. So it's quite an interesting chart, I think. Um, and then I just also looked at this, uh, the daily cycle. I thought, oh, it's funny because these all run in order and all the signs rise every day. So um, I don't know if this is ever used in timing of events, but you might notice if you're having a particular time of day, look at to see what sign is rising and see how it um, plays out. See if, you know, maybe that block will lift. This would be just something for further experiment because throughout the day, you can see it runs in groups, Aquarius, Capricorn, Sag, then it backs up to Taurus, Aries, Pisces, Aries, Pisces, then it backs up to Leo, Cancer, Gemini, and finally Scorpio, Leo, Virgo. So it kind of runs in groupings that might be an interesting study. Okay, so I think we're ready for questions. Thank you, sir, for a thoroughly enriching session. The learning has been immense. Like you said, we will now be moving on to the question and answer session. The questions put forth by the audience shall appear on the screen one by one. Sir, may I kindly request you to read out the question displayed on the screen for the benefit of everyone before you proceed to respond to them. Is there any general solution to reduce or negate the effect of Baraka on all signs? Okay, so this talks about, um, I'm, I'm taking this question to be about um, remedies for Baraka. Um, general solution to reduce or negate the effect. Well, I think it would depend. Um, we kind of, I would, in general, I would say that you have to just, um, you would, I mean, first thing is recognizing the Badaka. Of course, you would want to, um, you have the benefit of uh, the different mantras for the planets. You would want to do different kind of remedies and things like that. Um, uh, you know, to say mantras propitiate the planets and all that kind of stuff. But um, for each sign, I think, the idea is that for fixed signs, you want to get them moving. For moving signs, you want them to think before they they act, you know. And then for um, the dual signs, you want to really kind of bring them into the center. So depending on whatever issue they're coming up with, you know. So if it's, uh, you know, an 11th house question, like, and this is why I, I put in the relationships, because it's funny if, if the if the if it's an 11th house issue, I would look for the older sibling, you know, or if it's an older sibling, I'd look for the 11th house and see on what level it's working. Is there something going on on either the physical, the mental, or the soul level? Because maybe if it's from the Surya Lagna, it's the 11th house Vataka, I would say, oh, this is a very deep um, sibling relationship you're working out. So I would do it by the three groups, by siblings for the movable signs, by for fathers and authority figures for the fixed signs, and um, more like partnerships, relationships, um, peers for uh, the mutable signs. I hope that answers your question. This is just remedy to reduce the obstacles caused by Badaka. Okay, so we kind of have the same thing. Here, I would, uh, again, just reiterate what I said. Um, I think with Baraka, you will need to continue to work on something because this is a, um, an inherited karma that's come through. So I would think you would need um, specific uh, repetition, probably throughout life, depending on how deep it goes. Um, and, uh, you, of course, we'd also want to factor in the timing of transits as when to start things to reduce these obstacles. So, I mean, you know, like um, right now we have um, 
like the social justice stuff that has come up, like wherever the malefics are transiting, that's going to enhance um, the bodhaka um, of that. So for, I can't remember who is. So I would look at like wherever Saturn is going, you're going to propitiate Saturn, especially for people that that Capricorn is serving a bodhaka role for. Okay. Uh, does a benefic planet in a Bodica house reduce the blocks or will it create blocks? Oh, this is a very good question. Similarly, how does a malefic planetary placement in a Bodica house work? Great question. So if you have a benefic planet there, it would depend on the houses that that planet rules in the chart. A benefic is, is going to be more gentle, you know, um, whereas a malefic planet is going to be more obvious in its way and it's going to be there. But as you're looking not only at the benefic or malefic status of the planet in, in a Baraka house, you're going to also want to look at what house it rules in the chart, because if it's also the fifth lord and a benefic, the block is your it's not going to be um, it's not going to be as difficult in that you'll be able to identify it. A malefic planet uh, that is also um, a ruler of a malefic house may be very difficult to understand. So it will just take longer to work out that difference in the chart. But of course, as always, I also think um, malefic planets are much more um, aggressive. And so you're going to get bigger, more dramatic results when they go bad. Um, but that's not always true. I mean, there's so many factors you could think of. Uh, but Venus, which is, you know, benefic, can give you a lot of stuff but it can that can be the wrong solution and maybe that's what is the key to these badakas is that the planets are going to give what they give but we don't know how to use it effectively um we can get trapped like because if you know uh venus is in a badaka you can get trapped into too much materialism so the badakas are always you know you always have to look at both sides of the equation but thank you for that question that's a very good very good thought Oh, if a Vodka sign is the Dugda sign, will it increase the inauspicious effect? I've not really looked into this really deeply, but I would say yes. I think you are correct in that assumption. So, you know, you would want to look at that as Dugda, but you would also want to use the idea of uh, the Vodka sign. It's just a double whammy. So you would really want to look at that. Very good question. For Bernie Madoff, you said that the moon is weak because it's young. Is uh, the moon being judged on basis of degree? What degree um, would the moon be considered weak? Any other reasons that make the moon weak? Well, I look at that because it's a new moon, because it was right there conjunct with the sign. So the kind of rule I use, and I have read in uh, other books, is it with, within the moon, when the moon is within 30 degrees before or after the sun, it tends to be really dark. So like three days before, you know, three days after the a new moon, I look at it as dark. Um, so people will have that there. Um, that was really the primary reason, is I judge the strength of the moon on um, its relationship to the sun. And I'm I'm pretty liberal. Some people say like uh, two signs before and after. I try to limit it because when I, cause the moon changes so fast, um, yeah, that's the that's what I use. Thank you very much for the question. With this, we come to the end of the eighth session of the Vedic Astrology Masterclass Series 2021. I would like to again thank you, sir, for delivering an excellent masterclass. I would also like to take this opportunity to inform you all that the next masterclass session is scheduled for the 2nd October 2021, that is next Saturday. 
Our guest speaker for the session will be Swami Sita Ramananda, and she will be teaching us about Jyotish counseling, yoga psychology, and Vedanta. For more details and to remain updated about the activities of the foundation, please visit our website www.rrrf.in, or you could also join our Telegram channel. Thank you all for being a lovely audience. See you in the next session. Until then, please take care and stay safe. Namaste.